booking. Yeah. Learning a language is one thing. Remembering it and having real life conversations is another. That's why there's Babbel, the number one selling language learning app in the world. Babbel's award winning interactive technology gets you speaking right away. And best of all, remembering what you've learned. You're able to retain all this information, remember what you learned without struggling to learn it. Now you can try Babbel free. Go to Babbel.com or download the app and see why Babbel is the number one selling language learning app in the world. At Fidelity, trades are now just $4.95. We cut the price of trades to give investors even more value. And at $4.95, you can trade with a clear advantage. Fidelity, where smarter investors will always be. Think you know New York State? Think again. This is the new New York. We are building new airports all across the state. New roads and bridges. New mass transit. New business-friendly environment new lower taxes, and new university partnerships to grow the businesses of tomorrow today. Learn more at esd.ny.gov. Commercial real estate companies aren't all the same. Most represent property owners as their primary business. This creates a huge conflict of interest when also trying to represent tenants. Brokers and their management don't want to upset valuable landlord relationships. Hughes Moreno only represents tenants in their lease and purchase negotiations, never landlords. Hughes Moreno's professionals are specialists, and we've built a sophisticated platform that exists solely to help companies make better real estate decisions. HSN. It's shopping redefined. HSN. It's great stories with great storytellers. Wherever. Whenever. And we like to look good. Shop the brands you love. HSN. It's fun here. Happy shopping. Dot com. Morning Joe speaks truth to power. Here's a message to the White House. You keep lying, we're going to keep reporting. With access to the people who matter. What do you think you and Democrats might have been wrong about along the way? From the Senate floor. You're not upset by a president firing the man who's leading the investigation to the Oval Office. Two sources tell us at Morning Joe through every hallway in the Beltway. It's time to see what we see. We see the need for an extensive investigation. Morning Joe, weekday 6 to 9 on MSNBC. So let's talk about that cybersecurity trial balloon that went over like a lead balloon on Capitol Hill. President Trump hoping to work with Russia to stop election interference. It's not the dumbest idea I've ever heard, but it's pretty close. I am sure that Vladimir Putin could be of enormous assistance in that effort since he's doing the hacking. If that's our best election defense, we might as well just mail our ballot boxes uh, to Moscow. Whew. So, President Trump tweeting about this overnight as I'm joined by MSNBC contributor Naveed Jamali, former FBI double agent and a senior fellow with the Foreign Policy Research Institute. Also with me, Stuart Holliday, former ambassador to the UN for special political affairs. Back with me, of course, Caitlin Huey Burns and Ozzy Pabra. Um, let me show you this tweet, guys. You've seen it now. It's about 12 hours old at this point. The president writing, essentially, the fact that President Putin and I discussed the cybersecurity unit doesn't mean I think it can happen. It can't. But a ceasefire can and did. Obviously, Naveed, this was different from what he had tweeted 12 hours earlier, from what we heard when we were overseas in Germany, from the Secretary of State, from others, about working together on this unit. Uh, and Naveed, you, you make a couple of points. You say there's a couple of things needed when it comes to working with another country on international cybersecurity, right? Absolutely. I mean, and I'll, I'll leave the puns to uh, the Republicans in the Twitter sphere. Look, the reality is that when it comes to cybersecurity, take the elections out of it. Just traditional, you know, rote sort of uh, people who steals credit cards, you know, commit, you know, crimes. Uh, one of the biggest things is actually taking possession of that person. And when you work with a foreign nation, that perhaps is one of the key cornerstones. When it comes to Russia, I mean, my goodness, the biggest cybersecurity criminal resides in Russia today, Edward Snowden. Um, they can easily give him back to us. So when it comes to cybersecurity, we can talk about strengthening our infrastructure, but really when it comes to the sort of international geopolitical sort of discussion, a lot of it rests on two things. One, 
being able to extradite uh, people back to the United States to face charges, and two, being able to seize assets. So I don't imagine that Russia is going to be interested in, in doing either anytime soon. So it kind of begs the question, what's the point of even going down this road? So what was the point, Ambassador? Because former Defense Secretary Ash Carter says sort of memorably that Russia pulled out an old playbook here. When confronted mm -hmm. with something they've done wrong, ask for U.S. intelligence. Is that what was at play? Yeah, I think that and the fact that everybody's looking for deliverables out of mm. these uh, meetings. Yeah. And it sounded good. It, it looked like uh, perhaps that this could be some sort of cooperation. We've got the serious ceasefire, part of a package, but it was really ill-conceived. There's a reason why the Russians would want this a lot more than us. And it's, it's basically a head fake. Uh, and, and obviously the response um, from members of Congress and others sort of, you know, is evidence of uh, what, what the, you know, where the chips really are on this one. Uh, Ambassador, do you think at this point, when you hear something like we heard today from Senator Pat Toomey on Morning Joe, that this was a missed opportunity? And I ask that because of what Senator Toomey said. I want you to listen. Vladimir Putin needed to come away with that meeting, from that meeting, understanding that he's going to have to pay a price for his aggression in Crimea, for his aggression in Ukraine, right. for his aggression in the American elections, and that there's a president who let him know squarely, you're going to pay a price. So is he right, do you think, Ambassador? Was there a missed opportunity here? What message was there by talking about this cybersecurity working group? Well, I, th I think that there was in the sense that, you know, we have been attacked. Um, our election system, you know, was compromised by the Russians. And I think uh, making a strong statement to that effect is, is critical. Um, I understand that the president wants to move forward, and he does see cooperation with Russia on issues like North Korea, Syria, and others as, as essential. But it's important that we, you know, recognize that this is going to continue, and we have to you know, develop a posture where we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We can cooperate with the Russians where we need cooperation, mm. but we need to hold them accountable if they're uh, uh, infiltrating or uh, taking measures against our infrastructure or our political system. Naveed, do you think Russia would have ever gone along with this, this idea of a cybersecurity group, or was this just something that maybe Vladimir Putin was talking about to try to elicit this kind of reaction from the president? I, absolutely, I, I agree with the ambassador. I don't think, no, and the short answer is no. I don't think that there's anything to be gained by the Russians actually cooperating in, in strengthening cybersecurity in the United States and Russia. Uh, I, no, I mean, the short of it is, they, at the end of the day, Hallie, we have to start thinking of Russia as what it is. It is one of our, if not the most important adversary. Uh, and that's how they think of us. And they're not interested in, you know, suing for peace anytime soon. They are our adversary. They view us as that. We are their main enemy and they're not going to change anytime soon. So cooperating with them on a, an internal threat that, that is a, you know, a foundational a, attack on our, our national security, looking to an adversary to help us with that is, is just, it doesn't make sense. Caitlin, the short of it. And, Caitlin and Ozzy, my uh, colleague Peter Alexander memorably phrased it this way uh, earlier today, that this was perhaps the shortest initiative, the shortest lived <laughs> initiative in modern presidential history, given how quickly it existed and then apparently was kiboshed. Yeah, well, like it, it's sort of amazing from Obama to Trump, we went from cut it out to can you help out. Mm. And it also underscores how much credibility or skepticism there is for Russians uh, helping out with cybersecurity. Remember, Donald Trump had meetings with CEOs and tech entrepreneurs, and yet he meets with Putin and then comes up with the idea of, of having them help out. This would have been something that would have been much more better received if he had replaced Putin with, you know, American CEOs and tech entrepreneurs to say, can you help mm. us secure the infrastructure, especially with respect to the to voting? On the political side, too, Caitlin, you just had Steven Mnuchin out yesterday touting this thing before President Trump uh, uh, canceled it all. Exactly. Out there as the representative of the White House on the Sunday shows touting this. Of course, the president then undermines that shortly after. That's not the first time we've seen them kind of on different pages here. What I'm really watching, though, are on the consequences question. Question. The sanctions bill that just came out of the yeah. Senate, 98, 98 senators supported this going to the House. Um, I think that's really important to consider when you're also assessing the news we have today about these meetings between mm. Trump officials and the, the Russian lawyer. By the way, that subject on adoption has to do with sanctions um, right. that came out of that. So that's kind of what I'm keeping an eye on. What kind of pressure Congress can create, uh, if any, on this White House on this idea? Caitlin, Ozzy, stick around a little longer. Ambassador Holliday and Naveed Jamali, thank you both for joining us here and much appreciated. Next up, we're actually getting out of Washington, we're getting out of New York, and we're heading to Pennsylvania because as we speak, 18 former Penn State frat brothers accused of hazing a pledge to death are back in court to face a judge with a lot on the line. We're going to explain why. 
Tomorrow's headlines before they go to print. I've just been handed some great reporting. Tomorrow's questions before anyone's asked them. Could you make an obstruction case? I think I could. The 11th Hour with Brian Williams. Weeknights at 11 on MSNBC.